Well, hey everybody, we all know that there are anti-aging solutions for the face like Botox and other injectables like Juvederm and Redis and even deep chemical peels that can reset the clock on our skin. But all of these can be costly and they all have risks. So today I'm going to be giving you seven simple ways to reverse facial aging that we all experience as we get older with these simple, inexpensive, effective, dermatologist approved treatments. Now, that means if you're 30 or more, this video is for you. Well, as I said, today we are talking about seven ways to reverse facial aging. You can do it at home, inexpensive, effective, and dermatologist approved. Now, if you're new to my channel and you don't know who the heck I am, I'm Chris Gibson. I'm a skincare expert, trained esthetician, been doing this a very long time, 25 years. So I'm here to help you find skincare that will work for you, not empty out your wallet, and not do you more harm than good. So if that is the type of information you've been looking for on YouTube, please be sure and subscribe. Hit that little notification bell so that you know when my new videos are up every week. All right, so we're gonna jump right into this today, the seven ways to reverse facial aging. First, we're gonna talk about skin cleansers and taking a look at the cleanser that you're using. As we get older, our skin gets drier. It produces less oil. There become areas of the skin that are super dry. So most everybody after about 40 has really combination skin. And then we kind of go from there, combination oily, combination dry, combination sensitive. And all of us, as we get older, our skin does become more touchy and sensitive. So really we all end up in that same boat. Our cleansers, we tend to get attached to them and not change them out. And what we want to do is make sure we're using a gentle facial cleanser, one that will remove oil, dirt, and bacteria with simple gentle swirling motion of our fingers and rinse all of that away, leaving our skin clean, refreshed, and supple. I hate to use the word moist, but yes, moist and hydrated. The reason for that is we need the skin to be balanced so that the other products that we're gonna use in our skincare routine can work well. If your skin feels tight or really dry or that squeaky clean, shiny look and feeling to it, then your face wash is too harsh. It's removing too much of your natural lipid layer or barrier and too much of your natural oil. And it's actually doing more damage to your skin than being helpful. Now, there are a couple of great products out there, many, many face washes you can choose from. But if you're someone who wears cosmetics, there is MD Complete Restorative Facial Cleanser. It's a two-in-one cleanser that helps remove makeup, cosmetics, all of that along with the daily oil, dirt, and bacteria without drying out your skin. It is a really great product. If you have very sensitive skin, then I recommend Simple's, our Simple brand, Kind to Skin Gentle Face Wash. It's a glycerin-based face wash that's gonna leave your skin, again, cleansed. It's great for very sensitive skin types, especially if you have things like rosacea and eczema. This is a very good face wash. Now I will link to both of those down below as I always do in my videos so that you can check them out after we're done here today. So you can be sure and check out that video description because there's gonna be a lot of stuff from this video down there you're gonna to wanna to go check out. The next thing to look at doing if you're not doing it already is to begin the use of retinoids. Now, obviously prescription strength retinoids are gonna be the best option if you can tolerate them. That is tretinoin, we're known as Retin-A. All of those need to be prescribed and managed through a dermatologist because there is a good deal of adjustment that your skin needs to go through for most of us for these to work, but they work exceptionally well, helping to remove damaged skin cells from the skin, helping to speed up cellular turnover, helping to spark that collagen production that slows down as we get older. Now, as I said, there is an acclimation period with these prescription retinoids. If you can't tolerate them, this is where the over-the-counter retinol moisturizers come in, which work exceptionally well across skin types and even on sensitive skin. So tons of different brands of these. I again will put some recommendations down below in the video description box. I even use encapsulated retinol. This is CeraVe's encapsulated resurfacing skin serum. I apply to my neck, chest, and even the backs of my arms and it has helped over the last six months 
to fade all of my freckles and age spots even on my arms which even using sunscreen i you know just over a lifetime you get sun damage even with sunscreen that's why it's so important to wear that and we're gonna talk about that in just a minute so yes retinols very important to be in that skincare routine so that you can undo some of the skin damage that has been done and accumulated from sun exposure and also help you produce healthier more beautiful youthful looking skin and of course this leads me right into the next thing we want to look at, which is upping your SPF or sun protection game. Sun protection, so important. And I know how difficult it is to find sunscreens that will work for your skin and work for cosmetics and all of the things that go on with that. It's really sometimes a trial and error process for almost all of us to find that sunscreen that we really like and then lay on top of all of that, all of this scandal this summer and crises over what's in sunscreen like benzene and all the recalls and a no doesn't make it any easier but the bottom line is you need to protect your skin from sun exposure 80 percent of the visible signs of aging on your skin are from accumulated sun damage and exposure now i know this personally i began using sunscreen in my early 20s which was unheard of in the 80s just wasn't heard of but i was fortunate to have a very forward-thinking dermatologist who recommended that i wear that anytime i was out in the sun the end result is today at age 57 i have a lot less skin damage than a lot of my peers people my age because of that use of sunscreen and really avoiding sun damage through the years. Now, of course, I will recommend below a couple of different versions of sunscreen, both chemical-based and mineral-based that I like to recommend, L to MD and Neutrogena's Sheer Face Zinc Sunscreen. These are very good down below in the video description box, so don't worry, you can check those out after we get done. The bottom line to this is sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. Have I told you, you must wear sunscreen. Another area that often gets overlooked in the skincare routine is using a more rich formulation of a skin moisturizing cream, especially at night. Again, skin tends to get drier. We use the retinol moisturizer. It's really great to cap it off with a ceramide based or a very hydrating moisturizer that's able to trap water on top of the skin surface and help hold it down in the deeper layers of your skin. So you really need that ceramide hydrating moisturizer. Moisturizers that have dimethicone along with hyaluronic acid work very, very well for this. That's what I use. And not just for your face, but for your neck, your chest, and your torso. That type of moisturizer helps plump out those deeper lines and creases and really can make a big difference within about a week of applying this on a nightly basis. So Highly recommend you take a look at your night moisturizer and make sure that you're using something that's a little bit richer than just that light stuff that we use during the day. Now let's talk about watching what you eat. And specifically what I'm talking about are diets high in sugar and carbohydrates, things that spike like glycemic index in your blood. All of these have been shown to do great deal of damage to skin cell strength, actually causing collagen molecules to cross connect, making the skin surface thicker, stiffer, and more prone to wrinkling. So there is a effect that happens when we eat a lot of sugar in our diet. It's not just bad for your overall health, obviously diabetes and all of the things that go along with that, but it really does do a lot of damage to your skin. So cutting back on sugar, is one of the biggest things that I did. Sugar also contributes to increased inflammation in the body. And the problem with that is, is that it doesn't help you if you have acne or you have eczema, rosacea, psoriasis, that's all been shown. Those of you that suffer with that have probably heard this from your medical doctors that a diet high in sugar is not helpful. So I learned that the hard way myself when I was battling severe acne in my teens and 20s. Cutting out sugar was one of the best things, again, that I've ever done. I could literally have a soda or something very sweet, sugary candy bar, and my skin would be red and inflamed within five minutes. So I made that connection many, many years ago, but it stands today. It's been proven in over and over in scientific studies. I know I'm harping on my soapbox about sugar, but it's one of those things you really wanna take a hard look at. The other thing I'll say about diet is not anything you've not heard before if you've been watching me on this channel, and that's making sure that you add lean proteins, leafy greens, so you get your vitamins and minerals, 
foods, vegetables, high in vitamin C and lycopene. All of those help the skin protect itself from further damage, help repair the damage that's already happened. And in a lot of cases with sunburns and sun damage, a diet higher in lycopene helps reverse a lot of that damage too. So food really does make a big difference. What you're putting in your body really is affecting what's going on everywhere. And that's certainly true of your skin. Now, outside of your diet, you may also want to think about looking at some supplementation, things like omega-3s, which are hard for a lot of people to get. Fish, very high in omega-3s, but a lot of people don't like fish. I'm one of those folks. In that case, you can get supplements that are made with flaxseed oil or fish oil supplements that don't taste bad to help get those servings of omega-3 that your skin really does need to strengthen itself, support collagen production, and that also brings up a thing that I've recently added to my diet, which are collagen peptides. Now I did an eight week test on the channel. It's been about a couple months ago to see for myself if collagen peptides actually made a difference. And for me, they did make some difference and I documented it in this video right here. So I will link to that video at the end of this video. So be sure and check that out for my results. But I still take collagen peptides every day in my tea in the afternoon. Okay, and now, for perhaps the keystone to all of this and one of the biggest things to look at, largest things to look at, most important things to look at is a daily and weekly exfoliation step in your skincare routine. After about 20, our skin cell turnover rate begins to slow down. Those skin cells that are on the outside of our skin that we can touch and feel are actually dead. <laughs> They're dead but they tend to want to hang around a lot longer after 30, 40, 50, and 60. And the problem with that is, one, they make a barrier for your skincare products that it's difficult for them to penetrate, and they help dry out that surface layer of the skin, making it more prone to fine lines and wrinkles. So yes, one of the things we gotta do is make sure we get those dead skin cells off. Now I do this a couple of ways. I use a daily serum, 14% glycolic acid serum every morning. I use a Buff Puff Gentle Sponge to help swirl and lift off dead skin cells all over. I use this all over every day with my body wash and face wash. And twice weekly, I do a deeper glycolic and salicylic acid peel to help get that deeper layer of dead skin cells to loosen and come off. And I use a product from The Ordinary called the peel solution. You probably heard about it. If you watch me on this channel, I talk about it a lot. Twice a week, I apply that for 10 minutes and that helps really loosen that dry skin layer and get it to come off. Now, this is not a skin peel that's gonna be flaking skin coming off all over like you see on like TV shows and stuff. It's a very gentle way to do this. It's an ongoing process that as you do it over time, it really does give you some really great benefits. It helps reduce hyperpigmentation, melasma patches. It helps your other serums and products work much better because they're now able to penetrate deeper into your skin. And it helps your moisturizers work better because they're able to cling to the skin and protect it and hold that moisture in. So these seven very simple ways to reverse facial aging will work for you. You will see benefits the very first week you do it and as you move through time they just get better and better and better now i hope today's video was helpful in giving you guys some ideas on what you could do in your skincare routine that's simple from home and doesn't cost a fortune it's not surgical it's not injectables or any of that other stuff that will help you get really great results if the video was helpful please be sure and give it a like and let me know down in the comments below what other steps you take in your anti-aging routine that are helping you out and don't forget to check out my videos that are coming up next that will give you more detail on all these different steps and help you get your best skin ever. Thank you guys so much for watching. You know how much I appreciate you. Stay beautiful, love you guys, and I'll see you over on the next video. Yeah.